Okay, welcome to uh, Silicon Angles, the Cube, SiliconAngle.com. This is our flagship program. We go out the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. We're at the Industrial Cloud event with GE, and I'm joined with my co-host. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Vellante of Wikibon.org. Beth Comstock is here. She's the CMO of GE. Beth, welcome to the Cube. Great. Thanks <laughs> for having me. So, industrial cloud, industrial internet, big data, some absolute en enormous market opportunities. You guys must be really excited. Yeah, we are excited. I, I mean, the promise is huge. Um, and the technology is finally there and ready, so it's uh, it's ready, set, go. When did you guys start to realize the potential? I mean, it was probably a couple of years ago at least that you started to take action on it, but how long have you been sort of working on this initiative? Well, I think for our, as long as we're, as old as we are, I mean, we're a 130-year-old company, and at our core is this ability to make really great machines, and we've seen them over time get smarter and smarter. So these brilliant machines put out a lot of data. And you start to say, okay, this data is worth something to our customers. They want more than just reliability of the machine. And increasingly, we get better and better at that. They want the ability to take that machine data and run their business better. And so you, a couple of things happen. One, you, you start to see technology and engineering cap capability evolve so that your machi our machines really are brilliant. And then you hear customers saying, wow, it would be great if we could might we be able to? And you start to put those two things together and you go, there's a need and we have a capability. Beth, one of the things that we've been doing on SiliconANGLE on, on the news and the publishing side is really talking about big data as a trend, machine data, machine to machine, human to machine, <laughs> and big data as, as we know it. And Wikibon has put that study out uh, on behalf of this event. I wanted to get your question, uh, question to you about the data-driven business. And that's been talked about in the, tr in the press. Everyone should be data-driven. And, and predictive analytics and instrument their business. How does GE look at that internally as you guys go forward to the next generation, uh, being data driven? And you guys always had processes and had process improvement and had excellence in that area. How do you guys, what are you guys doing to change this new era of data driven? Yeah, it's a great question, and we spend a lot of time uh, thinking about it. It's probably one of the top priorities of the company, certainly of our chairman, Jeff Immelt. Um, t two things we've had to do. One, we've had to drive the capability to take that data I mentioned off of these great machines. It, you're going to be data driven. What does that mean? Yes, we can create data. Um, so we've had to invest in the right capabilities. So what you've seen us do in the past two to three years is invest a lot in software and technology capabilities. How do you take that data and do something with it? So the ability to analyze it on the technical side. And where I spend a lot of time with uh, the teams that I work with is very much on the commercial side. So okay, you have the data, you know that you can analyze it, but who values it? What questions do you ask to get the right data? Um, and then how do you uh, enable a team to deliver it in the right way to the customer? So it's not enough just to have the data. You have to say, is it even valuable? Does somebody want to pay for it? And can we make money exchanging it? So those are some of the questions we've been going down. We always talk also about disruption and business models and value chains around how data's changed. What, what internally can you point to and then how does that relate to the external market where GE's changed their value activities to serve your customers? Because you obviously have an installed base <laughs> and you have a huge business, but the acceleration of change has been so rapid with big data. How, what specifically are you guys doing in that area? Well, I think you, you've see, if you follow GE, you've seen a, a big trend for us. Um, we, we created a service business a couple of decades ago that was about um, basically maintaining our great assets. What happens with good engineering is after a while the assets are so good they, they don't break if they ever did. And, and as I said, now the ability to take that data and do more with it creates a new, new business models. The ability to say, um, it's not enough to say, okay, this jet engine isn't going to break down, but now we want to say, tell us when it needs to come in for repair early. Or maybe it doesn't need to come in to repair. So this idea of no unplanned downtime, that becomes a new service offering to say, not only are we going to deliver you a jet engine, okay, you know that's going to work, um, but we're now going to work to deliver you no unplanned downtime. So when you want that engine off, it'll be ready. When it doesn't need to come off, it won't be. So that starts to be a new business model and you need different ways to, to think about it. Can you talk about some of the cultural headwinds, Beth, that you might be seeing? I saw Ed Dumbill in the audience. He's the first time I heard somebody say that you, in big data, you, you know, humans are the last mile. You can't take the humans out of the equation. And certainly you're going to have a, a lot of old school engineers that don't want necessarily to embrace or are scared about embracing hyper automation. How have you guys dealt with that in, internally and how have you helped 
your customers understand the, the benefits? Well, I think what we're in industries where there's just a pretty good understanding of deep expertise and, and you need the people expertise and the machine expertise and they go hand in hand. I think one of the reasons we're so excited about industrial uh, internet is it starts with understanding these assets. It's just this deep history of how they work, these industries we work in. Um, Probably anyone can come in and figure out how to do automation and some uh, some really important software applications in running a railroad. But if you've been working in the rail industry for 100 years, you know very closely how it works, what the issues are. So I think it's that combination of the people knowledge with the machine knowledge that's critical. So I wouldn't say people are feeling left out. If anything, I think they're empowered because they're able to take those critical questions that they're thinking, if only I could figure out how to answer that. If only I could predict when that asset's going to go down, now I maybe can. So there's a real pull in your customer I, I, We're finding a pull. I mean, yeah, there's always culture change because you're doing something a little differently than you did before. But certainly there's pull from the customer base. They have to be more efficient. The pressure's on savings. They, they have capital expenditure pressures. They have uh, op operating expenditure needs. And so the, the pull is there. They're asking the right questions and they want to be partnered with people who understand their industry. Yeah, you just had this great panel um, uh, with Paul Moritz was on on there, Verna Wogels, a number of folks, uh, uh, Jeff Kelly from Wikibon, uh, a representative from Accenture, uh, and of course your own Bill Rue, um, and you got the question, really the competitive question, what if some other big giant comes in? Your response was interesting, you seem to welcome that, right? I mean, you know you can't do this alone. Talk about that a little well, bit. Well, the question was, uh, what if another big competitor comes along and launches their industrial internet? And I think the answer is a couple of things. One, the industrial internet is just a, a, a space. I mean, it's basically saying, machine, you know, the internet of things, in this case the internet of really big things, is coming online and um, we need to make sense of it. And uh, I don't think we're naive enough to think that the only GE is going to play in that. Certainly think we think we have unique capabilities, we're moving fast, but we certainly expect and are seeing many of our competitors uh, investing in software, investing in data and analytic capabilities. And I think there's a lot of competition to be thought about from, from, in, from places that have no expertise. And I'll give you a good example. Uh, or, or partnerships perhaps, but we launched a uh, competitive, uh, a uh, challenge, um, data science challenge a couple of months ago. We teamed with a startup uh, in Silicon Valley called Kaggle, mm, sure. and it basically harnesses the power of data science from yeah. data scientists around the world. We teamed with Air Alaska. We said, help us figure out better ways to land this plane, basically. We released the biggest amount of data ever released. And it, wa it was data scientists who have nothing to do with the aviation industry who were able to shave off, at least in this first wave, shave off an amazing amount of time, save fuel, save efficiency, get the plane landed uh, faster, better, cheaper. Um, you're going to have a lot of interesting players come into this space. And I think that's what data, we're yeah. banking on in yeah. some ways is that all the great capability, certainly here in Silicon Valley, that's been put to building the consumer internet, the retail internet, how do you take that capability and apply it to industry? Yeah, we always love to talk about like in these emerging markets, it's so new, it's like really pioneering some new ground. And uh, we always like to use metaphors. Oh, it's a lot like that, those days back and then. And, you know, and with the internet of things and the industrial cloud in particular that you guys are putting forth, it's a bigger operational impact as business value. Um, and you see a lot like sensors look like a little bit like the early days of local area networking, complex event processing. So the question uh, I want to ask you is, how do you, what do you guys look internally and saying our core competency at GE is in X and that's going to translate into these new things, whether it's data science, event stream processing, or things of that nature. What, what core competency does GE have that's going to be the real core enabler for this new generation oh, of internet? I think it's a things. couple of things. I think it's just deep uh, expertise in how brilliant machines work and making them the most advanced machines on earth. Um, and understanding how they apply in industry. And so I think we hopefully know what our customers want, what problems, we're good advocates on our customers, and then we'll continue to build out capabilities, but increasingly we have to partner. Uh, I think you heard the message here today. Yeah. We're here with Pivotal, we're here with Amazon Web Services, we're here with Accenture. It's all about partnerships because uh, as complicated as these issues are, there's there's really no one that can solve them alone. How about the cultural human resource issue internally? I mean, honestly, um, to make that change over, what, what are some of the things, what's the mindset internally? And, and, and in your partnership, you are partnering, which is great. We also have to kind of move the needle internally and get everyone on board. 
Well, I think a couple of things have to happen. One, it has to be declared this is a priority, and you hear that from your customers saying you have to get there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our chairman, Jeff Immelt, said this is a priority. This is the future of the company. We're going to put resources against it. You can't say it's a priority without funding it. So we, we're hiring hundreds of software engineers, new kinds of uh, market development and, and sales leaders to make that happen. We're calling on different parts of our customer, you know, different, you're, you're now working a lot clo more closely with the CTO, the CIO uh, of, our, of our customer base. So all that is change. Um, and so I think you have, to, you have to declare it, you have to invest in the priorities. And then partnering, I think, is just hard. It's just hard. And uh, our company's been on a journey. We're out here in Silicon Valley trying to work a lot more with startups. So I think it's partnering big companies and partnering small to big. And you just, you, you try them, you, sh you show that they work, and then you say, if we do it in this industry, why can't we do it here? So you guys have your big news out today. We're in, in, uh, we're in San Francisco, we're in the Bay Area. It's kind of Silicon Valley, I guess. It's technically San Francisco. You moderated a panel, you did a great job. It was really, was one of those panels that was really engaging, great content. And you guys kicked in business operations, was really a theme, usually you hear it's most about the tech. But I want to ask you, what surprised you about today's panel? You always had the prep going in, you had the guest, you know, the pre-briefing and all that pre preparation. What surprised you about today's event, today's panel? Well, I think um, what I knew coming in, obviously it was part of uh, planning for this event, we talked about industrial strength. I think I was blown away what that really means. And I'm not going to get the data right here, so um, you're going to have to maybe, I, I don't know, hopefully directly <laughs> it's right. So Warner Vogels from Amazon was talking about a Shell customer and the, the, the needs of the cloud that they have. And he said that Shell had something like, with, with their uh, subsea operation, something like one petabyte of data and they have a need for 10,000 instances of that and to bring it to the cloud. And you start thinking that's in every industry uh, and you just, the, the needs, the challenges for uh, real-time computing, the, the challenges for security, and then what I get excited about are what are the new business opportunities? What are the, the, uh, the applications? We were talking earlier about apps for industry. I mean, yeah. think of the people who are going to see things that we can't even begin to imagine once they get their hands on that, those challenges. What do you think about the bigger trend around when you go outside of the industrial space and look at just m the macro trends, the consumerization of IT, which would affect, you know, Maritz, and obviously Amazon's going after the enterprise. The media business has changed with social media. I was just, you know, seeing what, how tweets and with, with, with the sports and on TV and lifestyle, you know, there's cultural changes of consumers, that kind of the blurring. You know, you've seen a lot of that industry evolve over the past decade and, uh, on the media side, the internet side, now on the industrial side. What's your, what's your view of how that's all integrating? Yeah, it's, uh, it is all integrating, and uh, I, I think it's a good observation. I, I think what we're seeing in industry, we, we like to think uh, we're on the wave of, a, of maybe it's a second industrial revolution, and it's largely fueled by the opening up, the democratization of technology, so software's coming into hardware, um, the ability to have open collaboration, partnerships, things that started on the consumer side are coming to industry. So um, I think it's going to bring in, it's bringing down costs, it's bringing in a whole host of new capabilities. People who previously could never have thought of in entering an industry now can do that. So I definitely think what we saw in consumer is coming to industry. Yeah, we heard about software-defined machines today, right? I mean, the, the, the tech industry and the, the industrial industry are just slamming together in a, in a huge positive collision. It's absolutely happening. I mean, and we look a lot, even things, you know, everybody gets very breathless these days about 3D printing, but what is that? It is the digitization of hardware, right? I mean, you take a digital uh, image and you can create new geographies in, in a physical form. Those worlds are coming together, and so if you're in industry, you're starting to say, wow, a skill I might have had in visualization or gaming might suddenly apply in, in uh, an industrial context. So what's next for you guys? You, you obviously, big software center out here. You got you had partnerships with Accenture. You, the big pivotal investment and announcement, big announcement today. What's What can we expect going forward? Well, I think you can continue to see more proof points from us. I mean, we need more and more to show this works in industry, so I think you can expect to see us roll out more offerings and more impact from our customers in healthcare. I'm very excited with what our teams are doing. I mean, we talked today, the impact of healthcare, you know, something like the average nurse spends 20 minutes an hour looking for physical products. If you could track that d uh, in data. So healthcare, 
transportation, energy, I think these industries, we've just scratched the surface, so I, that's very much what's next, is let's get real applications into the market, start racking up productivity savings from industry, and I think it's going to blow people away. Uh, we'd like to think there's another wave of productivity happening as well. It's exciting here. We're inside the Cube. We're at a special event here in San Francisco with GE. Uh, great, Beth, thanks for coming on the Cube. Real time, actionable data, disruption, innovation, all kind of happening at the same time. It really is the perfect storm, and uh, we, we do agree with We think this is a revolution happening, and it's happening on a very accelerated basis. So follow the hashtag Industrial Cloud for the, all the conversations. If you want to tweet us, uh, go to that hashtag and leave a comment. We'll address it, we'll, we'll answer your question. We'll be right back with our next guest here uh, live in San Francisco after this short break.